Hello YouTube, I'm the Phone Witch and I want to play a game. And that game is teaching you how you can make your own reverse bear trap from the Saw movies. Now I am a massive Saw fan, they are my favourite franchise of films, so making this was really really fun. I made a template for this which I am giving away free with this video, you can find the link to that in the description box, so you can use that while you're watching this video to help you build your own. If you are just here for the free template though, if you could still watch this full video in the background, maybe while you're doing something else, so it can get my watch hours up, that would be awesome. Before we start, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you could do that now, that would be awesome. Otherwise, let's do this. The first thing I did in this process was to create a really messy prototype. This was so I could figure out all the different shapes and all the dimensions in order to make a proper template. It was a lot of trial and error, but once I was finally happy with how it looked, it was ready to tear it all apart, cut it all up into the different sections in order to make the template. As you can see here, these are all the pieces that make up the different sections for the base of the reverse bear trap. I then drew around all of these in order to give the final paper template. Now that the template was complete, it was time to start the final build. Starting with the mouthpiece. First cutting out this longer piece with the two darts on each end, this is going to be the back plate that the two jaw pieces get stuck to. Then I moved on to the two jaw plates. There is an upper and a lower section of these which I have marked out on the template because they are slightly different shapes. I started by cutting out the winged section and the back edge of both of these pieces needs cutting with an outward bevel cut. Once the three sections for this were cut out, it was time to stick them together. Both the winged and the curved pieces get stuck to the back plate flush with the edge that gives you something like this. This step is then repeated exactly to make the lower jaw plate. Both jaw plates have divider sections in them, so I just take this part of the template, cut those out in order to stick them in. This piece needs cutting out 11 times because the top section has 6 and the bottom section has 5. These all get stuck in lining up with the points of the winged section until they're all attached. They will overhang slightly so you are going to have to trim these down once they're stuck in. And once you've done all of that, it should give you something that looks like this. Because the reverse bear trap is made out of metal, I wanted it to look a little bit like it was welded together, so I just used some hot glue in the seams to add this effect. As with any of the detail I add to this, you do not have to do this if you do not want to. It was then time to stick the jaw plates to the back plate. Both parts get stuck flush to the back plate using the top and bottom lines for guidance. Just to confirm, the top jaw part is the one that has 6 divider sections and the bottom one is the one that has 5. Just so you get it the right way round when you're making this. Then it was time to move on to what I am going to call the headband. Cutting out the part that looks like this on the template, this part is not a perfectly curved shape. It has a kind of square blockiness to it. In order to achieve this look, I just took my Dremel Versa tip and I scored in lines at even sections across this piece. It's quite hard to explain what I mean by this shape, but once you form these pieces into place, it gives kind of a harsh square blocky edge rather than a completely smooth curve. I then used contact adhesive in the valleys that I had created, and once this got stuck together, it helps this piece to keep its shape. The headband then gets stuck to the back plate, which attaches the jaw pieces and the headband together. It's then time to move on to the back sections starting by cutting out this part of the template. I cut this part out of 10mm foam and I probably should have clarified that everything before this has been 5mm. Here I just cut out a thin section because I'm going to put the piece that has the hole for the padlock to go through in that part. Next, taking this section of the template, this is going to create the clasp. Cutting this out of 5mm foam, this then gets stuck behind the 10mm section, covering that very thin strip that has just been cut out. Which should look something like this. Next, taking this part of the template and cutting this out of 5mm foam. This is the part that I've just mentioned that is going to have the hole in it for the padlock to go through. It would have been really fiddly to cut that hole out using a blade, so I used a Dremel with a sanding barrel attachment just to drill that hole into the foam, which worked perfectly. 
This then gets stuck into that thin strip section, so it looks like a real clasp. The things you can achieve with foam, but if you think this is cool, there's even more to come. Moving on to the other side of the back piece, there's this little section that looks like a hinge. So to make this, I took a piece of thin foam dowel, cut this into three sections, and when these pieces get stuck back together, it makes this really cool looking fake hinge. This then gets stuck onto the edge that's nearest the large rectangle. Then, taking this part of the template, this gets cut out as a little square section that gets stuck on to the hinge. This back section is curved, not flat, so in order to give this its curve, I heated it up with the heat gun, rolled it into place, once it had cooled down, it keeps its curved shape. It then gets glued into place joining it to the front jaw piece, and the base is complete. To add some strength to the headband piece, I just added another strip of 5mm foam underneath just so it made it a bit less flimsy. Once the base build of the reverse bear trap was complete, it was now time to move on to building up all of that detail. Starting with this piece of the template which is going to make the timer at the back. This gets cut out twice of 5mm foam and you want to take one of those pieces and cut out a big hole in the middle. This then gets stuck back on top of the other piece that was cut out and it forms the shape of the timer. To add a bit more detail to this, I cut out a very thin strip of 3mm foam and glued it all the way around the edge of the timer. This then gets stuck onto the back piece next to where the padlock is going to go. And speaking of the padlock, that's what's going to be made next. You can just buy a padlock, that's absolutely fine, but I just wanted to make most of this out of foam. I used another section of the foam dowel and then cut out a small square of 10mm foam. When they get stuck together, it creates this cute little padlock. This then gets attached to the bear trap by threading the dowel through the hold piece that was created before. It gets stuck together and then that padlock is on there for good. I wanted to give it that little bit of extra detail so I drew on a hole where the key would go and then I just burnt this into the foam using my Dremel VersaTip. And I think this is my favourite part of the detail, it is just so cute. Next, taking this part of the template, this gets cut out of 5mm foam and gets stuck on right next to where the timer is. This section has a funny shaped detail at the front and when I googled it it's called an isosceles trapezoid. I know, get the audacity of that. So to cut this absolutely extra shape I took a strip of 10mm foam cut in an outward bevel angle on each side and that gave the shape that I needed. This isosceles trapezoid then gets stuck to the bottom of that curved piece. The most extra of all the shapes. Next I moved on to that box shape that contains the cog. I cut out three strips of 5mm foam and then completely eyeballed this by sticking them on and cutting them to shape. Although, if you've been to Seesaw X, we probably shouldn't be discussing eyeballs right now. To make that pipe section that has the cog at the end, I took this large foam dowel and cut a very thin section of it to make the cog itself. I drew lines on this to show where the spokes of the cog were going to go. And then, using my Dremel VersaTip, I melted the foam where these lines were that gave the spokes for the cog, and this turned out really well. A thin piece of foam dowel then got stuck to one side of the cog, with an even thinner piece of foam dowel being stuck to the other side. This then got cut to shape and stuck into the box section, and this looks cool. The reverse bear trap has a lot of fixtures and fittings, and I didn't want to make all of these out of foam, so I went to the DIY store and bought all of this stuff. And they never show John Kramer doing that in the movies. Does he have a trade account? the first pieces that got attached were the nuts and bolts on the jaw plates. I did have to take these pieces back off because I had stuck them on earlier in the build. Using my Dremel, I drilled holes into the foam where the bolts were going to go. The bolts then got threaded through on both the upper and lower jaw plates. And this is how it looked once all the bolts had been threaded. All of these bolts then got a nut and a nut cap stuck to the end. And to stick these into place, I used my hot glue gun. And once all of the nuts and nut caps had been glued on, this is how it looked. These nuts, ha, got them. The jaw plates with the fixtures attached, then got stuck back on. 
I bought these washers to attach to the rectangle on the back piece and what I did was I sanded them down a little to make the band a little bit thinner. They then got stuck on and to make them look more like they were supposed to, I cut a very thin strip of 2mm foam, stuck that in the middle of each one and then added a googly eye to act as a rivet. Back to touching more nuts now. And a nut and nut cap got added to the four square sections on the headband. Then this piece got added in between the washers, I don't know what it's called but it's on there so I added it. This piece then got cut out of 10mm foam and got stuck on the right side of the bear trap in front of where the pipe is going to go. And to make that said pipe I took a piece of thick foam dowel and stuck it on the right hand side behind the piece that was just stuck on. For the pipe section that goes across the top I used this hose bit that I got from the plumbing section along with this copper bend piece. I have no idea what any of these things are called but they worked. I took some thinner foam dowel which got stuck into the copper piece. This then got cut to size and got glued to the thicker dowel from before. The hose pipe section needed to be stuck to the other side of the trap so I used some no nails to attach this, left it in a clamp overnight and once it was dry it was rock solid. I covered some of the pipe in 2mm foam, this was to add some more detail and also to hide some of the join lines. Some of the detail on the right side of the trap include these little kind of key pieces so to do this I cut out a T shape, rounded it all off with my Dremel and then it got stuck on where it was needed. I made a shape that looked like this by joining together 5 and 10mm foam and this gets stuck near the top of the pipe. And another one of those little T shaped key sections gets stuck onto this. I then made a section that the cog is going to stick to and I did this by cutting a square of 20mm foam and attaching a 10mm foam hexagonal shape on top of that to look like a nut. This then got stuck at the bottom of the right side of the trap next to the pipe. It was then time to make a cog so I googled cogs, found one I liked, printed it off and then cut this out of 5mm foam. I love this piece. This then got stuck directly onto that square section that was just stuck on before. Another detail piece is added that sits behind this. This was made from a 10mm hexagonal shape with a 5mm hexagonal shape stuck on top. There is another key section which sits inside the cog. To make this I cut it out of 5mm foam and then rounded everything off with my Dremel and stuck it on. This attaches to the hexagonal shape behind the cog. A 5mm thick circle shape was cut out and stuck in the middle of the cog, with a smaller 10mm thick circle shape stuck on top of that, and with that the details for the right side of the reverse bear trap were complete. Moving then to the details on the left side of the trap and starting with another cog, again cut out of 5mm foam, and this had a section of foam dowel stuck to the back in order to attach it to the left side of the trap. When I talk about the left and the right side, it means as you're looking at it head on. Although, if you were wearing this trap and you didn't actually manage to get out of it, you would no longer have your head on. Now, same as the other side, a 5mm circle got added directly to the cog, with a smaller 10mm thick circle added on top of this. A very small hexagonal shape then got added on top of that, with a googly eye being added right to the very top to act as another rivet. These parts which I am going to call arm parts were then cut out, they were cut out of a 5mm foam base with a 3mm edging on the top. As you can see here, the more curved arm gets stuck to a piece of foam dowel that is on the headband, the second arm then gets stuck underneath the first one and then attached on the cog. Two hexagonal shapes then get added to the top arm piece to act as nuts. I honestly don't think there's been a time in my life where I've said nuts so much. A tiny little piece with a hole cut out in the middle is then attached to the dowel on the other side and this is going to act as one of the pieces that holds the spring into place. I was going to buy a spring but I couldn't find one that I wanted in the time that I needed it for so I had to try and make one. To do this I took some electrical wire and wrapped it tightly around a piece of foam dowel. 
I heated that up with my heat gun melting the plastic slightly, then let it cool and once it had, it held its shape and made a perfect spring. With the spring attached, there was one final detail that needed adding. Using some different electrical wire, two pieces got stuck on top of the trap to give the final detail piece. With all of the details now added, it was time to start painting the piece. After brushing on three layers of the Hexflex, I then sprayed on two layers of the Seal Prime. It was then time to start painting. Because the reverse bear trap is really rusted, I found this awesome kit that contained all of the paints needed to create a rust effect from Vallejo paints. Using my airbrush, I built up the paints in the order that it states in the instructions, and this gave an awesome rust effect paint job. Now the paint job was fine, but I wanted to take it a step further and make it look really rusty. So I used a method that was first recommended to me by Shaky Jake on Instagram, and I can't thank you enough for this tip because it was absolutely awesome. And the tip was how to make real rust. To do this, you take iron powder and stick it all over the trap. And to stick it to the trap, I used Mod Podge. Now I'd never used this method before and I probably went a bit more crazy than I should have and added a bit more than necessary, but this was what it looked like once all the iron powder had been added. This then got left for a full 24 hours for the Mod Podge to completely dry and then it was time for science. The three things needed for this were salt, hydrogen peroxide and white vinegar. In a ratio recommended by Shaky Jake, I used one part salt to four parts vinegar and gave this a good stir until the salt dissolved. Added to this was six parts hydrogen peroxide, again, giving it a really good stir. This mixture then got poured into a little spray bottle. The whole thing then got sprayed with this mixture, making sure to soak the iron filings as much as possible. This was a little bit scary considering I'd never used this method before and in theory it could completely ruin it. This was how it looked straight after being sprayed and you can already see that the iron is starting to turn orange. To help the chemical mixture do its magic I left it for a full 24 hours, even leaving it outside to help with oxidation. Yeah, science bitch! After battling the elements for 24 hours, as you can see, Real rust was now on the bear trap. It even carried on rusting over the next few days and it looks completely awesome. With that final step now being finished, the reverse bear trap was complete. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am a massive Saw fan, so to finally own one of the most iconic traps is amazing. I honestly think John Kramer would be impressed with my efforts. And I know that Billy the Puppet is impressed because he lives at my house and he told me so. If you are still watching this video, I want to give you a massive huge thank you and I really hope that it helps you to be able to build your own reverse bear trap. If you've enjoyed this video, it would be really awesome if you could give it a thumbs up like. If you still haven't subscribed to my channel and you like crafting content like this, if you could hit that subscribe button now, that would be absolutely incredible. And if you use the free templates to make your own reverse bear trap, please tag me in the photos because I would love to see what you come up with. I guess with that being complete, I've only got one thing left to say. Game over. I mean, I'll see you next time.